Ba-dum, bum, bum. Windy pig, windy pig, oh, windy, 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 windy pig. Right, it is the next day. It is absolutely freezing in the garage, so I've got the nice big warm jumper on. I've got all the bits from the carburetor come back, so I'm going to put them back in. I'll show you they're done, how they work. Um, I've also been trying to identify these carbs. Now, they are Makuni VMs, because you can see they're Makuni VMs, they look like Makuni VMs. But I think they're a different size than the ones that were on the bike. Um, the chap I bought the bike from mentioned that he changed the carbs uh, for I think he said 900 carbs. Now there wasn't a GS900 so maybe he meant GS1000 but I don't think so because the GS1000 I found or the information on the GS1000 I found they ran 30 millimeter VMs the 750 ran 26 millimeter VMs and I think these are 28s. I had a measure earlier but I'll show you um, these isn't the right tool for measuring balls. You normally get a caliper that sits in and it widens out and you can turn it. So you can find, you know, the high spots and low spots, if it's a complete circle or not. But these are give me a good idea, if I uh, guess. And the sort of, what I can gather is the widest part. It comes in at 28.2 or 3, um, which is obviously not 29, obviously not 30, and all 26. So I think these are VM28s. As far as I remember, my old man had a Z900 and that had VM28s on it, very much like these. So these could be Z900 Karasaki carbs, but I'll figure that out at some other point. Um, I'll have a look tonight and try and find the specs for those. And if they, if those had 130s or even 120s, because the other problem is, this was running when it was running without any air filter or any air box or anything. It was just running on, I think, either pods or it might even have just been velocity stacks, which means he probably had to jet up to get enough fuel for the extra airflow. So I'll have to do a bit of a think about it. I'm reasonably confident it's going to be Kawasaki carb, 900 carbs, but I'll figure that out later on. I'm just going to put this back together. Well, I put three back in. I'll show you this last one, uh, the bits that go in. The main things to worry about are, first of all, how the fuel gets into the float bowls, which is this little bad boy. And it's just a little triangly doodah that sits in this little brass piece and the pressure on the back of it, and that's sprung. Pressure on the back of it just opens and closes the little hole here. The reason it's sprung is so that if you've got some movement from bumps and stuff, it doesn't just sort of open and close constantly. It sort of, once it's full, it stays, you know, any, any fluctuations in the in the float from bumping doesn't just constantly open and close a valve and, and let too much fuel into the float bowls. The reason for that is you have to set the level of the fuel because this or these jets want to sit. Um, sure you mentioned piece, they want to sit probably about I think you know variously. You need to have the jets of various depth in the in the in the fuel. These slow running jets need to, I, normally it sits just above the slow running jet. So it normally be, if you think about there. Um, and the reason for that is the fuel goes up these. Yeah, so I'll show you the reason for that. Is the fuel gets pulled up these by the pressure, air pressure coming through. Um, and if the fuel is too low, it will just suck more air in. If the fuel is too high, it will just suck too much fuel in. Because you've got to think that. Um, the, the air pressure going through to get fuel in first has to overcome gravity and the closer to the top it is the less force it has to use to get that you know, into the carb so at the same throttle opening if the fuel was too high you would have more fuel going in which would ruin your mixture so you want to set your float height so that you're getting the right amount of fuel in at each various throttle opening uh, the other thing you need to do is set your heights for your needles but uh, let's fit this first. So that's valve seat in 
there. We'll come on to the middle here to pull the balls. Um, so is that going to be a little bit of 10? Bench is a bit of a mess at the minute because I'm sort of halfway through doing the moped as well, which I'll hopefully have an update for later on. That goes in there. Now, what have I done with that little valve? There he is. That sits in there. And what closes that valve up, and I'll show you this, is this float. So the float sits in here, and there's a little pin that holds the float in place. Now, these pins variously aren't held by anything uh, until the float bowl is on. Really, I missed. So, like you see here, there's a cutout in the back of this float bowl. So the the that drops either side of these posts, and that stops the the pin from sliding out. So, if you are working on carbs that are open, just be aware of your tipping them about. Those slides can come out, and the way the valve works is, and hopefully you can see this on the camera. A bit more light over there. Yeah, it looks good. Is that? You've got to think the float, the fuel level is rising up as it rises. The tag here, that little tag, pushes the back of that valve. And once it gets to a certain height, it holds it closed. No more fuel gets into that carburetor. The way you adjust the float heights, I'll show you properly in a minute, uh, is by bending those tabs back and forth. Basically, there are other carbs that do it differently, but that's how these work. Next thing to worry about is your slow running jet. These are stamped on them. These are 17 and a half. Uh, again, check your spec. They will tell you what size you want. And also, when you're putting things like this in, because they're soft brass, try and match your screwdriver to as close as you can to the size of your head so you don't slip out and, and graunch a bit off it or take a section out. Next is your atomizer. Now, what all this is is a straw. With holes in that allows fuel and air being pulled up to atomize. So fuel to be pulled up to spread out and atomize a little bit. That goes in like that. Ooh. And lastly, your main jet with this these are 130, they're stamped on the top and they give you uh, they meet the amount of fuel going in and out, you know, basically. And again, because they're soft brass, just try and match your screwdriver as close as you can to the size of it. There we are. And again, don't graunch them in because they're soft. So that's just that. It's easy as that. If, if that's clean, that's clean. Uh, and sometimes on the front of here, you've got another uh, air jet on the front here, which, which which helps with sort of starting and stuff and, and, and low running. As long as they're all clean, I'll show you that one. That should be good. So this is a little tiny one here. Look. Tiny little hole. Little tiny little hole, see, and just make sure you can see through it. Make sure it doesn't jagged off of shit. And put it back in. That one's been through the wash. I should take it out to show you. Sorry. So that's the car back together. I'll put the float bowls back on in a minute, uh, but not like this second. The other thing to, to just so you, I'm sure you know how carburetors work, but just to teach you to suck eggs. These old-fashioned slide style carbs you, you you open the throttle it lifts the slides that lifts the jet the needle up out of the jet so um, let's do this on here you've got to think your your float bowls here your fuel levels here your slow running jet sitting here going up into the chamber the wrong way that way <laughs> that way your Fast running jet is sitting here. Your atomizer is in the back of it. And that runs up into the chamber. It's there. So these all run up into well, view various paths. Sometimes there's little pathways inside here, but it's not so important exactly how they get in there, but they get into that thing. That's your atomizer with your holes in it. Your slide is here. Set into that's your engine side. That's your there. Of this side, there side, you have a slide in here with the needle hanging out of it, and the higher that slide lifts, the further that needle comes up out of the straw. Basically, increases the volume here, so that as the air passing this way is sucking fuel up and out, 
you know, the, the higher up that needle is, the more fuel you can go in. So as the as the as the amount of air you can get increases, so does the amount of fuel you get. It's as simple as that. Um, for other carburetors, um, answer that in a minute. For other carburetors, oh, I better answer that. Bear with me. Right, where are we? Sorry, I have to nip out for a second. We were just doing these carbs, aren't we? So yeah, so we've been through how these work. Slides lift, lift the needles out, and that creates a larger volume in the atomizer, and more fuel goes in as more air goes in. That's simple. Um, the other thing you get with carburetors, which are more common, especially on the more modern bikes that you will be riding, if you're riding bikes with carburetors still. Is CV carbs and the way they work is this time, look, they normally have a flat top with like a housing here, and in there sits a diaphragm right there, like that with a slide on it. Usually, sort of like a, you don't see there, but the slide sits on that diaphragm. The needle hangs at the slide, it's similar in its design is in the slide system, except there's a, this diaphragm here. Which is made of rubber, and there's a pathway that runs down. Um, I've drawn that right already. It comes from here, basically, from, the, from above the diaphragm, rather than from below the diaphragm. The diaphragm, the diaphragm there, so that's a hole that goes down there. And it goes to the, the engine side of the carburetor. So you've got the. Um, oops, that's a bit exaggerated. But you've got that side there. Your float bowl here, fuel level, slow running jet there. Come up into the system, and the in your fast running jet. And your atomizer, same as you would do. Your holes in the atomizer. Um, and then you've got, instead of the slide, like this does lifting with the throttle opening, what the throttle opens is a little butterfly valve here. And what a butterfly valve is basically just a circle <laughs> uh, on a pin uh, that sits uh, on the engine side. So this side it will sit here, uh, just this side of the car, on the back of the car, but And as you open the throttle, it goes from covering up the hole, interest of the carburetor, to running across the hole, so it lets more air through. So the further up the throttle, the more air goes through. And that, what happens then is, in the way the slide lifts, is the vacuum created by the engine running, so the piston's pulling down and pulling air in this vacuum, also then creates a vacuum. This pipe runs down to this front half of this, you know, this engine side of the, of the uh, butterfly valve, and it's that vacuum here that pulls this, that sort of sucks the air out of this chamber basically, and that's basically pulls the diaphragm up to the diaphragm, then bows up as the as the vacuum increases in here, and that pulls your you slide up, and that pulls your needle up, and that opens up the air passageway. So basically, all you're doing with the all you're ever doing with your throttle is metering air really, um, but in the process of metering air, you're also metering fuel. They are linked in the in the way that one inextricably you know causes the other so the more air rushing in the more fuel rushes in as well um and it's just a way of doing it cv carbs are in theory better because you know they open as they're needed as the you know you can you know you don't you're not just opening them and, and air's just rushing in um and vacuum no matter what the pressure is on the vacuum side on the, on the engine side it, you know you get the same amount of openness no matter what with these it, it'll only open in theory, exactly as it should, in you know proportion to the vacuum so, and vacuum being created by the by the engine running, so it should respond quicker and more smoothly than these would uh, to changes in load and things, uh, and in theory infinitely variable because that diaphragm can open, you know, you, you, I suppose a throttle is infinitely variable in that you can open it as much or as little as you like up to a point, but your sort of you know your your input is directly proportional to this. Whereas on this side, if you if you open that throttle body, that butterfly valve, and the engine's under load or something, or you you're under a different, you know, you lower pressure of air outside, it's cold or something like that. Um, you get the same amount of opening no matter what. Whereas with the CV side of things, um, you know, it's it's related to the engine running rather than just by your throttle arm as well. So it can be better. Uh, of course, you know, things where there's a spring in here, um, in the, behind the, in, above the, 
diaphragm, that then returns the diaphragm back to, so it's working against the spring, so that it always returns back down again as the bodies close. They can wear, and so they're not as strong as they would have been. The, the diaphragms themselves can become worn and rubbery and, and, and more less pliable or more pliable, which, and they get damaged by fuel as well, slowly over time, and they can split. If they split, it's not working, they're not open properly, they flutter and things. Um, but the CV carbs are generally better. You've got a smoother action, you know, a, a more adjustment to the air metering. Um, so that's that, really. So carburetors work. Basically, there's many more videos. If you're really interested or I'm not explaining it very well, there's a million YouTube videos of many people that can tell you how it works. Um, the other thing I was going to show you is how to set float heights. So this is important because, say you've got your, the way as the air goes in, as the fuel is sucked up, it has to overcome gravity to go in. And the closer to the carbs it is, the less force it will take to pull that fuel into the chambers, basically. So if it's got to go further, it takes more force, basically. Um, and so you can tune the part, you can tune to a degree how rich the bike runs with the float heights. Um, you'll find that your bike will have a spec as to what the float height should be. And 90% of the time, or in my experience, the most common way of measuring float height is from the ceiling gasket face at the bottom of the carburetor to a point on the floats. Or sometimes you get them where it's a flat float or a line on the float and you have to line that. That line has to be perpendicular. Is it perpendicular? Horizontal. Yeah, perpendicular to uh, the gasket face. That's quite common. Or there'll be a mark, like there'll be a line on here or something. You, you have to you know, line that up with this at a certain distance. It would be a, you know, a certain distance from a line on the body of the carburetor to a point on the floats. Um, with these, see, with these VMs, it's from the gasket face to the top of the float. And normally, and again, it can change. Normally, the way you check them is you you get the carburetors near vertical. So that the little tang, this piece here, let me get the camera in. Let's see if it's better. This little tang here is what presses on the valve. You see at the back there? I hope that works. I'll show this camera in in case it didn't work there. And so you get it so that the the floats are basically neutral on that valve. So they're touching it, but they're not putting the pressure on. If you go this, you go too far down this way and they're, they're pressing on it, you want it nearly vertical so that they are just touching. So it's just a, They're just neutral in the back of that valve there. And then you measure whatever you've got to measure. So for, for these ones, I know it's the gasket face to the tip of the float. It's difficult with round floats to, to gauge exactly which is the top bit, but you tend to get a, a, a spec. So it'll be like, from 23 to 26 millimetres. Uh, I think for the VM26s in the book, it should be 22 to 25. Again, I don't, like I said before, we're not 100% on what carbs, well, we're all, we know they're VM28, but I'm not 100% on what bike they're off, so I haven't got a spec as such yet. Um, but these look to be 22, maybe 22 and a half, which could be right, it's fine, I don't know, but you don't know. Um, but if they're not right, the way you adjust them is, is by just bending that tang. So if you find the bike is too lean of fuel and going up a jet doesn't help, sometimes the float height can be the problem. So to raise the float height, you want a, sh a smaller gap. So that, you know, the, 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 the float wants to be closer to the, to the valve. To, sorry, the float wants to be closer to the to the carburetor body. So and what you would do then is you would then bend that tank outwards. And literally that's how you do it. And I know it sounds a bit uh well, a bit slapdash, but re literally you would take this pin out. I mean you can do it with it in, I tend to do it without. You take this out, you would just bend that tang up a little bit, you put it back in, you put your pin back in. And remember, these pins can fall out and hold in by anything. You can lose them. I've done it before, and then you measure again. And I, I, mean, I haven't changed it, but you know, you would measure again, and you do that again and again. And if you find that the float is too high, it's too rich, I'll put it around. You just bend the tank back in again a little bit, and it's just unfortunately, it is a little bit of measure it, take it out, bend it, measure it. 
you know, take it out again, bend it again, put it back in, measure it, show you where to do it. Um, but that's invariably carburetors, or a very basic view of these carburetors. Um, what else can I show you? Oh, and the other thing you can do with these is you can adjust the height of the needle, so the, the starting height of the needle, so how far the needle is up the atomizer can be adjusted. And on these, it's a bit annoying. Most of them are fairly easy, or easier than this. Uh, which one's got the best looking screws? These are obviously open and closed a few times, and they're absolutely fucked. Some of them. I'm going to replace the screws on these carbs. I'm going to get a, a full carb kit, which has got everything, gaskets, um, and these screws for this top, because I've just been mullered by somebody over the years. Either they've used the wrong screwdriver, or they've just fucking monkey-handed knob. Um, or both. <laughs> you know? The way you adjust these is, and these are a bit awkward. With some carburetors, you just pull the slides out, and there's a clip. Um, so, I wonder if I've got a slide with a clip. Probably haven't. Maybe I would, but I wouldn't be able to find it quickly. But all you'd have is, is you the, 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 the top of the... I'll just do it. What you'd find is the top of the needle. So you've got your needle. I want those. I'll lose them otherwise. So you've got a needle. It's a good needle. What I need. And what you end up with is the top's got notches in it. Like that. On both, well, all the way around, obviously, because it's round. But notches going down the side of it. And there's a, and there's a, in the, in the actual slide itself. Which is, uh, There will be a clip that holds it in place into the top of the slide, basically. Um, dot drops in there. There's a clip in here, and what you can do is, depending on where you set that clip on that jet on that needle, sets the height of it at its neutral position, um, and that will affect everywhere through the rev range. Because obviously, if it starts higher, it you know it gets higher completely, and if it starts lower, it, it, it can get lower over the whole rev range. So that can. That could be something you can do if you've got bad running, but carburetor tuning is a, is often a little bit of trial and error. But with these ones, which I quite like, to adjust the height of these needles, and I think to adjust the height of the floats, well, I've not had a really good look. You would have to take this one, well, the carburetor off here, and there's like a little, oh, I can't really see it. Let's see if I can get the camera. See it. But there is an adjuster in there. Um, if I can get this in. I can get this in. See it. But trust me, if there's an adjuster in there. Um, the other thing, you, yeah, to which you, inside there is a little locking nut and a pin, and you can just hold that and turn it, and that lifts the needle up and down. But also, you can adjust the the height of these slides so I would think and I'm just guessing because I haven't read the book fully the way you'd once you've set your idle speed the way you'd balance these is through here I think because what these do is I can show you this is you've got a locking nut here and you've got a little oh, you've got a locking nut and an adjuster screw and what that does is it lifts its entire arm well, there's a, that section there lifts that inner section that the arm stays still, and the inner section is like a rod that's hold on the back of that uh, slide. Will just lift that that look that winding that outwards would lift that slide up and down a little bit. So I'm pretty sure, and I put money on it, that once you've got the engine running and you've got your idle speed set, when you go adjust the idle to make it all even, you would raise or lower your each individual slide to get the right amount of air going in at a time. Um, but like I said, I've not seen like that before. Um, I don't do a huge amount of carburetor work because I try and avoid it really because it's fiddly and smelly and horrible. But um, that looks, and these are, and I don't tend to work on bikes this old either. I tend to work on bikes into the 80s and into the 90s on the whole. Just seeing these old sort of late 70s carbs, interesting. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that really. I, the only thing I want to do now is just find the spec for these, stick them all back as they should be, set them all up, um, put them on the bike, 
and run them again, try them again. And hopefully, if it's not too cold this week, I'll be able to do a bit of that. Um, so I've got the weekend to myself, I think. Uh, obviously go up to the yard and do that sort of thing. But yeah, it'd be nice to see. If you've got any questions, let me know. Uh, if anything isn't very clear, let me know and I can explain it again. Or you can find someone else to explain it for you better. Um, and also, I've got a bit of an update on the moped as well, uh, which I will get sorted out and show you soon. But yeah, thanks for watching. This has been Wendy's Gag of Rags, a Raj, a Raj, and I'll see you next time.